This is the big time. Aaron, if you please. My smoking jacket. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Welcome to Third and Long. This is a fun show. Dave Dickinson's away. Bo Levi Mitchell has joined us. And I'll tell you what, you're going to hear and you're going to see things that you didn't expect to hear from Bo Levi. This is a fun interview. Welcome to Third and Long. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Third and Long. Mike Lonsbro, along with Bo Levi Mitchell. You know what? Dave's not here, so we decided to do everything that we wanted to do ourselves. Relax, drink some wine. Here Put we are. Sunglasses on. Put the sun <laughs> this is great. It's like mini me, a younger me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Only you can throw a ball. <laughs> <laughs> had to, you had to bring a more fun guest on. I'm going to give you some more fun answers. That's what I want. I don't want you laid back. I want to talk about everything and everything. And we'll talk a little football, but let's get into the personal life too. I mean, first of all, you, you started throwing for the first time in six weeks for a full practice. How does that feel? Yeah, it felt amazing. I put the helmet on. Uh, typically, you know, you walk out there, put the helmet on, do some warm-ups, take the helmet off for uh, the majority of warm-up. I kept it on. Yeah. Because I had, had, hadn't had it on for six weeks, and I didn't want to take it off. So, uh, you know, I hadn't missed a game in a long time. And uh, to get out there, throw the ball, just hang with the boys, the camaraderie of it all, um, it was nice to be back. That's for sure. Is that the part you missed the most? The guys or the competition or a combination? Oh, 100% it's competition. Yeah. The guys aren't that great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're awesome, man. They're great. Uh, no, I mean, that, that's always, you know, a fun part of it. But, um, you know, when it comes down to it, man, we're competitors. Right. You know? So um, I love watching Nick play. Um, love watching Montel grow. But at the same time, you know, that's my position. That's my job. And, and I definitely want to get back out there and, uh, and show everybody again, you know, why uh, I am who I am. But that's the part of being the best quarterback in the CFL. If without that confidence and without that authority, who knows where you'd be? you got to have that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, confidence is a huge part of it. I think that's in any job you do anywhere. Uh, if you exude confidence, that a lot of people will, will, will cling to you. Right. You know, that's in any profession that you do. And I feel, especially with football, um, I need the guys around me to know that I know what I'm doing. And if there's a play to be made, I'm going to go out and make it. And I think that's going to cause them to up their play a little bit and have that you know, that same confidence that, okay, well, if any play comes to me, I can make it as well. You know, that's my guy. I'm his guy. Uh, you know, we can do this together. Whereas if you're not showing that confidence, guys might play a little safe, conservative. So I've always tried to err on the side of confidence. Uh, and I know a lot of people like to talk the borderline of cocky and confident. But, uh, you know, I think you should teeter that, that line a little bit. Absolutely. How, how much pain did you have or what kind of pain did you have when throwing today? Uh, no, today was great. Yep. Today was a little bit of tightness, um, which by halfway through the practice kind of let loose. And honestly, I was only planning to throw routes on air. Um, got out there, warmed up, you know, threw some routes on air. But then I was like, you know what, man, it feels good. Uh, I'm going to show the teammates that the arm's feeling good. So I started letting it rip a little bit. Uh, ended up going with Skelly to go against the defense. Started talking, talking some trash to the defense a little bit. Um, <laughs> And then got back in the team, fumbled the very first play of the team, by the way, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you're acting overconfident. Um, but no, it felt good to get out there, let it rip, and just show the guys that I'm back. We've been talking too much. Let's have a little, a little wine. I agree. Yeah, this is way more fun. Yeah, Dave didn't drink, did he? He doesn't drink? Nope. So, well. Yeah, it, all right, I'll, I got a story for you. Okay, let's hear it. After the Grey Cup, yeah. we're winning. You know, we win. We're in the locker room. Try to get Dave to have a beer. He has one beer. I don't know if he even drank all of it, and then he yeah. was done. <laughs> We're all chugging beer out of the cup. Yeah. You know, keg stands, not actually, but basically. Um, and yeah, man, he, he's like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really drink that much. And I'm like, we just won the Grey Cup after losing the last two. Like, you're about to have this beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. In 92, um, Imagine the drought. The Stampeders went 21 years without winning. So they win in 92, and I was with the team in, in Toronto. And I was two years old. Yeah, oh, 
had I known you, I would have brought you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what, Bo? It was just I saw guys like uh, Stu Laird, you know, Matt Finley, uh, Greg Peterson, all these guys that were friends uh, win this thing, and the emotion that went along with it, you know. So, you know, this is you know the Canadian guys grew up watching this. What's what was the Grey Cup like for you? I mean, you've won two of them. Yeah, I mean, should have um, won four. Yeah, but I that's should. That's just me saying that. I should have as many Grey Cup rings as you have bracelets. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, <laughs> you may have in time, buddy. <laughs> um, man, I, I think I think the emotion is it's high, it's unexplainable. Um, you know, it's it's it really is. It's indescribable the the, the feelings that come over you. You know, it's you you talk you talk a big game to the media when. They ask you before the game, oh, did the last two Grey Cups matter? And everybody puts on the poker face. No, of course not. You know, we're just going out here to win this one game. Um, but in the back of your mind and in your heart, you know that it does. You need to go out there and prove to everybody else that you can win in the big game. Um, and just all the team that played in that game want to make up for what happened. And I think once we won the game, all those emotions just kind of flood over you. And, uh, you know, you're high-fiving everybody on the team, but if you you know, happen to high five a guy that's been on the last two teams that lost. You know, there's a little bit of extra special hug right there, uh, knowing that, you know, you kind of finally got it done. And, um, you know, it doesn't hurt that it was in Edmonton's locker either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make sure you guys are in your own locker this year, buddy. Yeah, I know, I know. Because <laughs> we've seen that movie before. Christ, in 93. Yeah, they came down here and, and won it in the stance locker room. Oh. It's, it's a tough pill to Our swallow. job to make sure that doesn't happen. Yep. Um, Okay, as a, as a kid from Texas, um, when you first came up here, what did you know of the Grey Cup game? What, uh, was, was this totally brand new to you, or had you seen it, or, or what? Uh, so I was first introduced to the CFL. I actually transferred from SMU, which is down in Dallas, right. Texas, uh, to Eastern Washington. And Matt Nichols, who's the current quarterback of the Blue Bombers, was the quarterback at Eastern Washington. And as he left for his senior year, that timed up perfectly with when I was transferring. So the coach hits me up, says, hey man, Matt's done. You know, we need a guy. We think you can be that guy for us. All his receivers are still here. Um, he had a great year with them. You know, they're gonna be that much better next year. Why don't you come up, take a visit, see if you like it. So go up there, loved it, signed with them. And Matt's actually down trying out for the NFL. And I'm watching him with the Cowboys. He doesn't make it. And he signs in the CFL. And my head coach, Bo Baldwin, happens to tell me, he's like, hey man, listen, if the NFL doesn't come calling because of your size, level of competition, I think you should go to the CFL. He goes, I know Matt's gonna do well up there. He's like, but that's your game. That is made for you. It's a giant field. You have the arm to make every throw. You're athletic, get out of the pocket. Um, I think you would really shine out there. And uh, lo and behold, man, you know, I start Googling it. First thing he comes up with Ricky Ray. I, right. The last season I looked at, he threw for 6,000 yards. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I think I could play up there. That'd be a little bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, and fun fact, man, Bo Ball, my head coach, his uh, last five quarterbacks are Mike Riley, Matt Nichols, myself, Vernon Adams. Right. So four starters in the CFL right yeah. now. So that guy kind of knows what he's talking about. So um, definitely glad I listened to him on that. Hey, what's your relationship like with Mike Riley? It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably... He seems like a cool guy. He is, man. He, yeah. he is a good guy. He's a... Uh, that's the best way to describe him. He's a very good guy. Yeah. You know, he's uh, solid with the family, solid with everything off the field. But, um, you know, when you text him, talk to him, him and Lule, they're, those two are like brothers, by the right. way. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Mike, myself, uh, Matt, we're all in group text together. We all talk. We all chat. And, uh, man, he's awesome. He's, he's a competitor all the way, but, you know, he, he'll, he'll throw a beer back with you and have a good time. Yeah. Would you wear one of his hats? Would I wear what hat? The top hats that he wears. Oh, man, I have a gigantic head. I actually, <laughs> I saw the top hat right over there on the uh, yeah. Colonel, Colonel Mustard candlestick over there. <laughs> and I was like, man, I should throw that on for the interview. I it kind of matches should. the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> but you would realize that I have a very big head, and that just makes it look even bigger. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Well, anyhow, I just, it's a tough year for him, eh? And it's got to be painful to watch. I mean, it's tough, tough as a friend, tough as a quarterback. I actually, I texted him uh, three days ago, and you know, everybody in the media loves to jump on people. Um, you know, all this kind of stuff. Now they're starting to question him. I just texted him and said, 
uh, I said qu PS or sorry, quick reminder. Dot dot. You're Mike Riley. Yeah. Dot dot. That is all. Yeah. I and mean, uh, to me, you two are are set the standard for the quarterbacks in this league and have for a long time. 